her so much. Uh, on Sunday morning, uh, my wife and I, we got dressed, we got the laptop out there, we had church with you, and I don't know, there was a turning point in my sickness Sunday morning. Lord, amen. When Brother, when brother uh, Mac Harrison paused to pray for the pastor, I could feel it on the other end. Amen. I mean, I'm not big on feelings, but thank God for feelings like that, Brother Terry. And we all need each other more than we think we do. It's just to hope we need each other in our prayers. I've been praying for Brother John. I've been praying for others who are sick. And, and I want to thank the church for uh, your prayers for us. I want to thank you for your support, your love, the food. I just If I had a video camera <laughs> to show you uh, the food that has been brought to our house, it's unbelievable. Someone asked me, what are you going to do, preacher? You're not a good... I don't know I have to cook for a month. There's been so much food, I'm not kidding. And so, uh, you know, I just praise the Lord, and we know where that came from, every good gift coming from above. And I thought about, you know, the last message I preached, I preached uh, at the very end about Elijah being fed by the ravens and how God takes care of his people. And I couldn't help but think every afternoon when these people are coming down uh, the trail, you know, up our little uh, road there, coming to, up to our house, and uh, they're leaving it on the back porch, you know, they don't want to get near us, and that's good too, but I couldn't help but think, Lord, that's that little raven, isn't it? Yeah. That little raven bringing the food by, yeah. and uh, that's just how God does it, and I'm telling you, I just want to thank the Lord, I want to thank this church, we're thankful, I'm so thankful for a loving church, yeah. you know, you've been in churches, and uh, you, you could sense much love, but that's not that's not Temple Baptist. And I want to thank God for Brother Matt Harrison as he really uh, waxed eloquent on Sunday night. Amen. And I want to appreciate him having the liberty uh, to come and to minister. And all the preachers, everyone has done uh, excellent. Uh, I will say this, uh, last uh, Monday I started feeling bad. And uh, so that's been uh, two weeks and two days. And out of those two weeks and two days, I probably had fever two weeks. Wow. And, uh, you know, I, you don't know really what to think when you get fever like that because it's up and down, up and down, up and down. It just wears you out. I, I had all kinds of visions. You know, I thought, you know, my, my flesh was just like on fire. And so I was just thinking, you know, I, I first got visions of the, of the lost. You know, if this flesh of mine is, is hurting this bad and, and it's agonizingly, you know, when you're in fever like that, you're in pain. Brother John can tell us about it. He knows. And I thought about, you know, if I'm in pain for 12 days, excruciating pain, I have Jesus Christ as my Savior. Yeah. I will never experience the pain, the excruciating pain like this throughout eternity. And I began to praise the Lord. Amen. It helped me to think about my condition eternally is fixed. Amen. My condition Amen. tonight, I'm talking about my, I should say this way, my position in heaven tonight is, is fixed. It's eternal. And of course, all these variables down here on earth, they change, don't they? And one of the things I said, I'm from the same passage tonight as I was, just a little travel brother here. Uh, I'm from the same passage tonight as I was uh, the night, the last night that I preached. Let's turn to Psalm 106. Psalm number 106. I made the statement about praising the Lord, and I was preaching on the leanness uh, of your soul. You may remember it, how that they soon forgot and they they became uh, consumed with lust, and they they were uh, provoking the Lord to anger. And I, I covered the last parts of the verses in Psalm 106, but I want tonight, uh, I made a statement in the message and I said, you know, I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy. And I sensed the praise, I, I, I mean, I was preaching about leanness of the soul and how to keep from getting uh, this shallow uh, thinking, this shallow feeling in our heart. And uh, I felt a sense of praise in the service on that Sunday night. And I said, I made this statement, I said, I don't want the devil, I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy. So I want to pick right back up 
I want to pick right back up to where we were in Psalm 106 tonight. Let's praise the Lord anyhow. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, Psalm 106. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment and that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with thy favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation that I may see the good of thy, sal of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation and that I may glory, that I may glory in thy inheritance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this portion that we've read before these sweet dear people. Lord, bless their homes, bless their families, uh, uh, bless our nation tonight, Lord. We're reeling, uh, Lord, in our country. We, uh, Lord, we've uh, been so far away from you for so long, Lord. I ask God that you would draw us nearer, blessed Lord, nearer, uh, Lord, to thy cross is our prayer. Lord, thank you that uh, our church emphasizes your cross. Lord, during times like this, we need to draw near to you, Lord. And I ask, Lord, tonight that you'll help our congregation, help those that are hurting, help those that are sick. Lord, especially touch my sweet wife tonight to help her to know the church is praying. And, uh, Lord, help her to know that there's a, uh, there's a improvement coming to her and her health. Uh, help Brother John, Lord, to know that this church is praying. Uh, Help Brother Glenn and Sister Pat to know their people that are praying for their condition. Lord, help Lord Brother Chris Schultz, Lord, who's been suffering. And I pray, pray that you uh, heal his body as well. Sister Ann and, and Brother Arnold, God, please look after their need tonight. Uh, There's so many, Lord, that we named before the congregation tonight. Uh, but Lord, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, help us to think of these things, the good things tonight, Lord. The goodness of God. Lord, you've been so kind. You've been so good. We have no complaint in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. Amen. We have no complaint tonight. That's right. We have no reason to gripe tonight. We have no reason. Listen, we're breathing. We're living. Uh, we're living in the land of the living. And the scripture here tonight says that I may rejoice uh, in the gladness of of thy nation. He's talking to God. He's talking about the nation of Israel. How many prays for the nation of Israel every day? Put it in your put it in your home somewhere. Psalm 122, verse 6. Uh, he says that he will bless those that bless uh, Israel and curse those that curse Israel. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. We must continue to bless her. We must continue to pray for her. And the two most hated nations in all the world are Israel and America. And we need to pray for both of them tonight. We need to pray that God would once again stir our hearts uh, uh, and be convicted to sing songs of praise uh, like Israel. And of course, uh, God made Israel. Uh, and he made her to do as he wanted her to do. Let's turn, if you will, for a companion scripture tonight in Romans chapter number 15, please. Romans chapter number 15. And we'll see there something very, very important that we must learn to do as Gentiles as well. Let's look at verse chapter 15, verse number 1. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And of course, this is an Old Testament verse being fulfilled into the New Testament. And the scriptures makes it clear that we, as the Israelites, uh, they're known for their praise. They're known for their singing. They're known for uh, their giving God glory. And uh, he said that all of you Gentiles need to get caught up into that. You, you need to learn how to sing. You need to learn how uh, when you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. When you're, uh, when you're indisposed or not, it doesn't matter. You need to learn to give God the praise. Another, 
the, the very first words out of the psalm tonight. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, verse 1. Amen. That in the Hebrew word is hallelujah. And it's in every language universal to say. We were in India preaching with Brother Bagwell. And he would get the, 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 the congregations all riled up with one word, one word, hallelujah. And they would answer him back, hallelujah. And he would get louder and louder and louder. And before you know it, it was singing time. And, you know, you, don't, you just never know what will happen uh, when you praise the Lord. Right. And, and uh, it's not something you have to muster up in the flesh. It's something that you understand in the spirit. It's something that God speaks to your heart about. And you understand that he is your God and you're communicating with him. And, and you are uh, just praising God for who he is. Uh, uh, not even for what he's done, but you're praising him. Uh, and may I say this, it does also say to give thanks unto the Lord. And, and so if you praise the Lord, and you can sing hallelujahs, but if there's not an attitude of thanks for all he's done for you, you haven't reached that hallelujah yet. Right. You haven't reached that praise uh, that you need just yet. Just keep singing. I'll never forget as a child, we'd have one section here, one section here. This would be the hall hall hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And uh, they'd sit down, then to this side would stand up, praise ye, the Lord means the same exact thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, right? Hallelujah is the Hebrew, and praise ye, the Lord is the English interpretation of that. Uh, how would it go? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And they'd sit down this side and stand up, praise ye, the Lord. And they'd stand, keep standing up, and praise ye, the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye, the Lord. That's it. And look, we didn't have a lot of lights and fog, and we didn't have a lot of skits. We didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, none of the things that they do uh, today. We just had an old-fashioned uh, vacation Bible school, no actors, no scripts, none of that kind of stuff. But you know what? We learned how to praise the Lord. Amen. We learned how to praise the Lord. And I want to be defined as a Christian that uh, all my life I want to praise the Lord. I don't want to get the mullet grubs. I don't want to get bitter. I don't want to get complaint, uh, complaining. I, I, I don't want that bitter spirit on me. I, I want to praise the Lord to my last and final uh, breath that I draw. And in these two weeks, I will say this. I, I saw my mortality right in front of me. I saw it for the first time. I saw it. God showed me that this life is not very long at all. And we have to be prepared at at any moment. You never right. know when God's going to call us out. Right. And so all I can say to you, I'm about 80% tonight, I'm not 100, but I'm praising the Lord. Amen. I'm praising the Lord. I'm Amen. praising my God tonight. He's so good. Amen. Oh, he is so good. Uh, let's, let's look what God's word says. His mercy endureth forever. Oh, thank God for the mercy of the Lord. Amen. And who can utter the mighty acts? Who is it? that can utter all the mighty acts of the Lord. Who can show forth all his praise? None of us. None of us. Psalm 107, the next one, the Bible makes it clear in my life verse, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Has he not been wonderful? Yeah. His name shall be called Wonderful. <laughs> the mighty God, the counselor of the, 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 the mighty God, the great, uh, the, uh, uh, his name shall be called what? Wonderful. Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. There it is. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look, don't die bitter. Don't die ugly. Don't let them go wonder. Uh, when they put, uh, you know, say a few things over here, don't, don't make people wonder how you felt, how you lived your life. No, don't make them lie over you and say a bunch of words that are not true. Look, just live every day to the fullest. Live every day to the fullest. How do you do that, Pastor? By praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. Don't get bitter on God. You know what you're saying when you're not praising the Lord? God's mistreated you somehow. God's given you a bad hand somehow. And you're just going around with a big old ugly look all the time. Should never happen. Should never happen. God's been good to all of us. Amen. I say God's been good to every single one of us. Amen. Then I'll say this: Give thanks to the Lord. Now, as I've already said, if your praise does not include thanks, you didn't make it. 
Amen. Amen. You didn't make the cut. Go back and get some praise. And, and get that thanks in your heart for what he's done. And, and uh, you know, some thank the Lord here and there a little bit. But then they forget the Lord. They forget what he's done. But because the Lord is good, because the Lord is mercy, is, 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 the Bible says here, it endureth forever. Listen, we get his grace. We get so much more than, than just grace, don't we? It's not because we're worthy. It's not because we're good. It's not because we deserve it. It's not because of any of those things. No, it's because he's worthy. Amen. Amen. And so we, we have no reason to complain tonight. You know, when people ask me how I'm doing, I'll say it this way. Just memorize this. If it's not, it's not original, I'm sure with me, even. My complaint department is broken. My complaint department is broken. You know what? The alternative to praise is not good. We could slander God. We could slander each other. We could throw off on something in the country that may or may not be true. Who cares? Keep your eyes focused on God. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And look upon his beautiful and wonderful face. You know, they said about our Lord that if the books were written, of all the things that our Lord did, the Bible says that there would not be books enough on earth to be placed all the things that our Lord did. He is a good God. He is. A, he is. Listen, one day there's going to be a book opened in heaven. You know who it, which, which one we're talking about, right? And they're looking around. In the, in the book of Revelation, they're looking around to see who's worthy to open this book. And no one can be found worthy enough to open the book, but one. You know who he is. Amen. And then they begin to sing the song, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Before you ever sinned, God knew you would sin. God loved you so much that he gave you a way back before you ever sinned. That's how good God is. Amen. So some days when you don't think God loves you, you better think again. Right. Amen. Amen. Some days you think that, yeah, you know what, uh, uh, God's picking on me. You better think again. God's made heaven just for you. That's right. Why don't we claim these uh, blessed songs that we sing? And why don't, why don't we uh, uh, claim these verses that we read uh, in the Word of God? The song of Moses that we mentioned to you, the sister Miriam as she was using a temple and she was getting happy in the Lord. Romans 15 and 1 says this. Again, praise ye the Lord, all ye Gentiles. You think about Exodus chapter 15. I'm not talking about going cares, man. I'm telling you what, when we think about what all that God has done for us, yeah. he alone is worthy of us praising him. Amen. I don't know how you praise the Lord. I don't know if you praise him by singing. I don't know if you praise him by shouting. I don't know if you praise him by singing in the choir. I don't know. But you find out how you praise the Lord and you better get with it. We don't have much time left. Psalm 150 says it this way. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. We need to learn to praise the Lord. Amen. I think the, the, most, the, the most terrible thing the most terrible indictment that can be made against the, the children of God is that we don't praise the Lord. We need to teach our generation, especially our young people, we need to teach them to sing praises to the Lord. If I can still remember songs when I was children, our children are not learning how to sing praises to God. Right. They don't even know any Bible songs. It's pathetic. I say we need more children's choirs. I'm still praising the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I said we need more children's choir. We need more youth choirs. And, and look, people, uh, we should not be afraid to sing. I don't care if it's in public. We should sing songs. We should sing. We were asked one time to come down here to the Sam's Wholesale Club at Christmas time and sing, let our choir sing. And I'm so glad we did. I'm so glad we did. Look, people will never, ever sing as long as they're not encouraged to sing. And we need to encourage it. We need to, we, we need to let the redeemed of the Lord say so, the scripture says. So in, in Romans here, Paul is saying 
We need to do like the Israelites do. We need to prove our thanks to the Lord. We need to sing songs of praise to our Lord. And look, we can do it in church, but we can do it in our homes as well. Amen. We ought to get up in the morning singing. Does anybody sing at home? My dear mother, bless her heart. Uh, I could just, I, I could just uh, set my clock by. She was going to sing, and uh, I mean, I, I mean, way up when her sickness was still, the last thing that went was her music, and uh, she still sang praises to our God. I'm so thankful for that. So thankful for our God to hear this. Look, folks, don't get bitter. The battle will overwhelm you if you get bitter. If you don't keep a song in your heart. If you don't keep a song in, on your lips, the devil is going to have a heyday. He's going to steal the joy of your salvation. Don't let him do it. Amen. Oh, don't let him steal the joy of your salvation. This is Psalm number 53. Uh, Psalm number 51, excuse me. Psalm number 51. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You know why souls aren't getting saved? Because we can't keep a right spirit. Okay. We can't get restored the joy of our salvation. And oh, listen, pray in verse 10 of Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Listen to verse 8, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Tonight's message is about rejoicing. It's about praising of the Lord. It's about praising God. Uh, for uh, this gladness of the nation that he has given us, whether it be America, whether it be Israel, it doesn't matter. Whatever nation he's given us, we need to be thankful. We need to be so delightful that he's given us this land to raise our families, to raise our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, that we can come like this on Wednesday evening and hear a portion of God's word read, and we can sing, we can praise, we can hear the prayer request. My friend, listen, we're very privileged people. Amen. Very honored. I thought about our uh, missionary to Myanmar, Brother Kim's father, and he, he asked us to pray for their country over there. They're in civil war, and, and because of some election results that were uh, somehow uh, tainted, uh, they, they had a civil uh, the, the, the military coup, they came in and they took over the country. You know, that could have easily happened here. Uh, we, we have a lot to be thankful for tonight. And, and I think about those precious little people over there. They love the Lord. There's many, many Christians there in that part uh, of the world. And, and uh, you know, if, if we had suffered like these dear people, I promise you, I promise you tonight, there would not be room enough to put all the people if there was more suffering like that that goes on in these third world countries. You understand where I'm going with that? And, and so you say, Pastor, what's wrong with our praising? Well, what, what is wrong with our thanks today? And I, I think we're too affluent. I think uh, we've been blessed so much that, that, that we don't even appreciate the blessings anymore. We just take it for granted and, right. and, and we expect That's it right. from God. And, and God is looking down. He must look down out of heaven and say, how not I bless you so much? How, how come you're not returning the, the praise? How come you're not returning the thanks? Of? How come that you're so stiff-hearted? How come you're so stiff-necked? Yeah, exactly. We need to come and return thanks and return praise. It's a great indictment. I say it's a great indictment tonight. Then I want to say tonight, verse number two, and I'll try to close it with this. I, I talked to Brother Mac uh, earlier today, or yesterday, and he said, Brother Crane said, be careful. He said, don't forget you got to preach on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't strip it out on Wednesday night, preach. He, there it is. Notice what it says in verse number two. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Wow. Who can? I mean, don't. <laughs> you ought to make a list when you get home. You ought to just make a list and thank him and praise him. Just start. I, I was sitting back there uh, earlier tonight and I was thinking about all the needs of the people and the sicknesses and such and and, uh, and then I started a little praise side over there. But, you know, my praise side is always shorter than the prayer request. Have you ever noticed that? I wonder if our praise was longer than our prayers, if more would get done. If we would praise him, especially first, 
But we jump, we jump right into the needs and we forget about all the benefits. We forget all the things that he's done for us. And so, if you would, never quit praising the Lord. Amen. There's something about it. There's, some, there's something, you know, if I was God, I, I'm not God, but if, if I was God and there was a people down on earth that no matter what came their way and no matter what happened to them, they still praised me. I think I'd bless those people. Amen. Surely there's a connection. God sees that we're not griping and we're uh, we're not disoriented because of sin. We're not uh, living a shameful life, and we're, we're truly trying our best to live a thankful and a holy life, a, a life pleasing unto the Lord, a life that we could not just praise with our lips, but with our lifestyle. Of, you know, praise the Lord. Can, can you to just say this for the record? This may be the message tonight. The whole two weeks that I've been out of the pulpit, time with Mrs. Crane, she's convalescing, of course. I didn't keep, I did not lose my praise with my Lord. Glory I did not do it. I did not do it. And would you help me pray that I won't do it? I'm going to pray that you don't lose your praise. Amen. Let me tell you, Mr. You Know Who is trying his best to get all of us to lose our joy. He wants us to lose our praise. He wants us to lose our, our fellowship with the Lord. He, he wants us to lose, uh, that he wants us to have that, that leanness in our soul. I spoke about Sunday night a week ago. He, he wants us to be defeated Christians. Yeah. Right. I hate that feeling, don't you? We all get there from time to time. But, but my goodness, here's, here's what I want to do. I want at the end of life's way. That it was said of me that I served my generation by the will of God. I served the Lord with gladness. And I came before his presence with thanksgiving. I want to praise my God. I want to go on record tonight. That I want to keep winning souls to my God. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms, I read it to you just now, that I may teach transgressors thy ways. There's no way to teach anybody anything from the Bible. If you do not have joy in your soul. Right. Why in the world would they want what you had to offer if you were bitter and ugly and crabby and crude and rude? Right. Uh -huh. I know preachers that are so rude. They never have any joy. They're always complaining. They're always griping. And they're always tearing up everybody. And they're just trying their best to look for the bad of their brethren around the country. It's hypocrisy. Yeah, that's exactly right. We need to praise God, folks. God is a great God. Amen. His work is a great work. We need to praise Him. I don't have time to look up all the booger boos of my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I don't have time to come by your house and, and see how you're living or not living. Good night in the morning. The Holy Spirit is living in your heart. Amen. He's working in your soul. Thank you for being here tonight, church. We spent our whole life trying to win a soul of Christ. I hope, listen, I don't want to be ashamed. I don't want to get to the end of the life of, that the Lord has given me and, and, and say that, uh, you know, the Pastor Crane was ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have a great heritage, a godly heritage here. And let's not give in. Listen, let's not give in to these infirmities. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Let's not give in to these infirmities. This is Paul said. That the power of Christ may rest upon us. Did he not say that when we are weak, yet then we are made strong? <laughs> I can't explain that to you. I can't put that in words. I can't put that in writing. But I know this. It makes me glad in my heart when God comes through for me. Woo, it makes me so happy that I'm a part of a Christian church and I'm a part of a Christian nation. It makes me oh, I'm so happy when I see my little grandchildren singing praises to my God. Amen. That's not accidental. <laughs> Amen? Amen? When I hear my little juju come and sing and play that piano right there, and, and, you know, it just does my heart good to know that, you know what, you can't stop a child of God. You can't stop the church of Jesus Christ. That's what all this is about, by the way. This is an attempt of our enemy to shut down this church and every other church in our nation. And I will not stand for it. Amen. We've got to stand up, church. 
Has there been a time for you to stand tonight? It's the night I, I was listening to my son. He's an hour early. And I was listening to him on the way up here tonight in church. And guess who was leading the singing at the church? Old Johnny Boy Crane. Amen. When I heard him start to sing, it put something in my heart. Amen. My little, uh, my, my little thumper down there just made a little flutter. Amen. When I seen my boy up there leading the singing and uh, Sister Emily over there uh, playing the piano, I began to rejoice with them. Why? Because all their life we've tried to teach them to praise the Lord. Oh, listen, folks, you can sing the blues if you want. You can teach your children to get bitter and ugly and nasty and, 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 and complaining and, and, uh, and just get that old foul spirit. You just get that old bitter uh, spirit if you want to. But look, that is not made for the Christian. That lifestyle is not made for the Christian. And if just one or two of us would stand out and say, by the grace of God, we're not going to give up. We're not going to give in. We're not going to quit doing what we know we're supposed to do. We're going to read our Bibles. We're going to pray. We're going to go to church and, and hear that the devil and all the imps of hell. We're going to keep on keeping on for our Lord. Rejoice, rejoice, hallelujah, rejoice, we need to learn to rejoice, I'm writing a song up here, <laughs> rejoice, rejoice, oh Emmanuel, Emmanuel, oh come with me. Oh, Israel, remember Romans 15 and 1 or 15 of what it said tonight. Oh, ye Gentiles, oh, ye Gentiles, if the Israelites can rejoice in Exodus chapter 15 over the great victory at the Red Sea crossing. I think Paul was trying to help us, old Gentiles. He said, we better learn to rejoice. We better learn how to praise God. I'm not talking about wild, charismatic confusion now. That's not in the Bible. Now that slain the spirit stuff's in the body. You can't find that. That's right. <clears throat> but, but I think we go the opposite direction. We get scared off from that so we don't do anything. I'm not talking about rolling the floors now. I'm talking about really genuinely praising our God. Amen. I sent a little video around before church tonight trying to strike up some interest. Now, and, and there were some young people, and there was about four or five rows in the church. And, and they were all singing to the tops of their lungs. You know, you've been in services like that. It just thrills your heart to hear people singing from their souls. It did something for me. Rejoice in the Lord always. Don't let the devil steal your joy tonight. Let's bow our heads out, shall we? Father in heaven, <clears throat> didn't try to preach tonight.